But the ultimate freedom or Independence Day is when Christ liberated us Amen. from the power yes. and the bondage of sin. Yes, sir. Praise God. Jesus Christ was prophesied about uh, beforehand about the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Yeah. Even before the foundation, one grain of sand that came into being uh, in this earth. Uh, the Lord had a plan to redeem, buy back his people out of the bondage of sin. It all started back in the garden when God created man and woman, and they had a free will, and they chose to believe a lie coming from one of the fallen angels who fell from grace of God up there, uh, one of the third of the angels that fell. He told them a lie got them to believe a lie and from that sin entered in and when sin entered in separation center uh, came into our being separation from God and even separation from one another division came in and death and murder and war came in the firstborn child to humankind was a murderer fought over uh, sacrifice an offering. You can only imagine what was going on. And here we are today, brother against brother around the world, uh, still immersed in warfare. Sin is still here. Still, still has an impression on our mortal bodies, our mortal mind and being and so on. But there was a lamb that came, born in a manger, to free us from sin. And the only way he could free us from sin is to shed his blood for us. A perfect lamb, sinless lamb, that died on the cross for us. And we have but to know that storyline of Jesus Christ, the baby in a manger who went on to be 33 years old. Perfect man did not have one sin against him. And he gave himself a sacrifice for our sin. All sin of all the whole world to those who would trust him and believe in that sacrifice. If we have to look at him on the cross, spiritually see him on the cross for us, he died in our place that we would um, be able to have, again, go back to him. Fellowship with God. Yes. Fellowship that was separated in the garden. Yes. Once man had sinned. John 8, verse 31 to 35, Jesus speaking to the Jews who believed in him. There were Jews there when Jesus was speaking, they believed in him. They got part of the message. John 8, 31, he said, Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word or continue in my word, you are my followers, my disciples, indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. Instead of a lie that put Adam and Eve into bondage of sin, and all the world thereafter, sin has a lot of power. The liar has a lot of power. But Jesus, the way, truth, and the life, came to show, example, truth. And if we will believe in him and follow him, we would be set free. And they answered him, we are of Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. Huh. From Abraham's time on, have they ever been in bondage? Have they been reading the book? How can you say then, you will be made free? <coughs> questioning the Messiah. And Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. See, they knew about a son having his heritage and still being able to be in the house, but not a slave. A slave is only in the house temporarily. And here the son, S-O-N, capital S-O-N, he says if you would believe in him, he would make you free 
and you will be free indeed. And that's the truth. Amen. Jesus spoke the truth. There's a liar out there it's called the devil. And we need to come back in with the truth of the gospel. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Get a picture here of some of the things we should know. Some of the things we should know. Even if you have to say it to yourself, I know whom I have believed in. Good scripture to memorize. That he is able. Christ is able. I need Jesus. Amen. I need Jesus. He's able to keep what I've committed to him. I've committed my life, my soul, my spirit, my everything to him. And I know he's going to take me all the way through to heaven. And I made that commitment when I died out to sin and started following Jesus. And he has been faithful ever since. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I can testify to that. I know that for a fact. I may not know a lot of things about other people and so on, but I know what happened to me. And we all should know our own testimony. Amen. Yes. So powerful that somebody can be convicted of it. Mm -hmm. And the ones who will be convicted of it are those that are of the truth. See, there are people who are of the truth and they don't even know it. And they're wandering around in the, in the world of sin. And we come along and share the testimony of Jesus Christ right now living in your life. And that moves them. That moves them to want more of what you've got. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you give them an invitation. Same invitation that Jesus gave. Follow me. Two words. Follow me. I'll show you all about it. There's a big, thick book I'd like you to, to read and listen to and, and be a disciple, a follower of. Listen to these words that the Lord says. Starting out in verse 3, do you not know? Do you not know? I wrote in my Bible right here, I know. I know whom I have believed. Do you not know as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Another word for baptized is immersed in, dipped into, underneath put in, baptized, clean, clear water. Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death. A lot of spiritual talk here. We need to be in the spirit to understand these words. Otherwise, they're just words. They're spiritual words. <coughs> buried with him through baptism. Something to ponder something to teach someone else about. Have you been baptized since you believed? Hmm? Have you been baptized since you believed? That's in the book. Have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit since you believed? That's in the book. And their answer was, we didn't know. We didn't know. He starts out, out here and says, do you not know? Do you not know? It's a good question to ask people. What do you know? What is your salvation based on? How are you saved? You might run into some Christians that are doing unchristian things, and you might ask them, how, by the way, how are you saved? And what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're thinking. Hmm? Let's read the book. I want to stay saved. <laughs> I do. Stay saved. You see, there's, there's a a book that tells us how to get saved in the book of Acts. And there's a whole mess of letters written how to stay saved, how to stay in. A lot of rebuking and admonishing and exhorting going on. Are we doing that today? Or are we timid? Are we afraid to upset the apple cart in some people's lives? Loved ones, friends, maybe some strangers. Hmm. God said he would give us power to overcome that fear power to be witnesses unto him. Hallelujah. So he says in verse 4, we were buried with him through baptism. Thank God it was water, not dirt. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Walking in newness of life. 
How is that working for you? Hmm? Do you feel it down in your soul? Do you see some of the sins out there that you used to do? You used to say, I used to talk like that. I used to walk like that. But hallelujah, I'm saved. I don't do that anymore. I don't think that way anymore. I don't speak that way anymore because I don't want to. Absolutely. It does not have anything over me that I want to tell those jokes anymore. Matter of fact, I don't even want to hear that joke anymore. I've heard that joke before. I don't want to hear it again. Amen? That's our witness. That's our powerful witness. And then that person, if they are of the truth, it's going to grind on them. And they're going, to, they're going to repent. The first words out of Jesus and John the Baptist's mouth in their, uh, in their ministry, when they started ministry, repent for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here. You have but to listen and obey and believe. Praise God. Verse 5, for we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Do you feel it? It should bring you to your knees. It should bring you to tears. It should bring you to stammering lips. Amen. When you start thinking about we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Christ died for the ungodly. He died for me in my sin. While I was still a sinner, Christ died for me on a brutal cross. When I see that and I equate with that, that should be me. That is my sentence. For the sentence of sin is death. So he says, we've been united in the likeness of his death. We need to ponder that. So we can know. Do you not know? Yes, I do. I know it. He did that for me. The cross should bring tears to our eyes when we start in on the emotional level, when it starts getting deep. For me, for me, you did that for me. Certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. He died, he was buried, and he rose again as he said he would. Three days later. And so, he says, knowing this, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. I accept what he has done on the cross for me. Hallelujah. Our old man, that means, what that means is the sin nature of Adam. Your inheritance, by the way. You inherited sin from Adam and Eve. And there was no um, remission to that sin until Christ came. You see, the sacrifice of bulls and lambs and turtle doves and so on were all rolled ahead to the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. The greatest event ever on the planet. His birth was a great event because it led to his death. Without his birth, we wouldn't have his death. His birth led to a sinless life. And that sinless life, then, as Jesus set his face as a flint for a flint toward Jerusalem, he had a mission to accomplish. And that was the saving of mankind for those who would believe on him. So he says, our old man, the sin nature of Adam that we had in inherited, Oh, that's just the way I am. Yes, as a sinner, I remember. Oh, that's just the way I am, the way I think, the way I talk. That's the way I learned it. That was sin in control of my life, my mind, my doing, my sayings. My, my old man, sinful state, uh, nature of Adam was crucified with Jesus. You get the importance of that? The sin of Adam in the garden that caused us to be divided, to cause us to be murderers, liars, cheats, fornicators, adulterers, all of those things, that whole bushel basket of sin, nature of man, was crucified on the cross. 
That's big news. Yes, it is. And we can attach my old man to that. Mm -hmm. My old man was crucified with Christ. That's why he came. That's what he did. That's what he was doing. And while he was doing it, the two thieves got to see God's love in action. And one of them got the message and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, you will be with me today in paradise. He was faithful even on the cross. And then he says, our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with. The body of sin means the sin in the believer's life. I am not a sinner. I was a sinner, but I've been saved by grace. I am not a sinner anymore. I may occasionally miss the mark, but I have an advocate, a lawyer, so to speak, that will plead my case. Yes. Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross. He's a perfect lawyer. He's got my case. And so this sin in the believer's life, the body of sin might be done away with. It's done away with. I'm not going to drag it up anymore. I don't have to live in it anymore. That's just the way I was raised. That's just the way I am. You might not be that way, but I am this way. No, it's done away with. The sin nature is gone. Isn't that amazing? We've been freed. The prison bars have been opened. You see, I'm not staying in the cell anymore. I'm going to get out and do a jig. I'm going to dance around and shout. I'm free. I don't have to do that anymore. That's coming up in the next slide. I don't have to do that anymore. Listen to this. There's a few that's in here. That. That's a pretty cool word, isn't it? It's an emphasis word. It emphasizes what has said before. Okay? Body of sin, done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. A slave is someone who has a master over them, telling them what to do and what to say, what to think, and so on. You don't have your own way your own will anymore. You're, you're stuck in sin. You're stuck. You're in prison, in bondage. For he who has died has freed us from sin. Freed us from sin. That word right here is a Greek expression. Justification. Freed. Justification. It means no more obligation to sin. Huh? I'm not obliged to sin anymore. I, you don't have the power over me to make me sin anymore. The, that old Cliff <coughs> Wilson thing, the devil made me do it, was a lie. And that went around the world. The devil made me do it, making fun out of that. The devil doesn't make you do anything when you're freed from sin. He might make you do it if you're a sinner and you don't have the blood of Christ on your soul. He can make you do anything. He can make you do a lot of things. Crazy things that we're seeing right now in the world. That's the devil at work. In sinners. who are not following Christ. You see, they haven't been freed from sin. Freed from the bondage, he says, of sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him knowing. We believe and we know. We believe and we know. They go together here. You, need, you see that in that line? Yes. We believe is trusting. I know who I believed in. I have faith. My faith is carrying me through. That's a rock solid uh, substance in my life tangible tangible I feel it in my bones my faith 
Okay, so he says, we believe that we shall live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Praise Death God. no longer has dominion or power over him. Hallelujah. So he does not have power over me either. Amen. You see, the last enemy that's going to be destroyed, enemy, enemy is death. Death is an enemy. It's still prevalent in our mortal bodies, yes. But it's also prevalent in our immortal soul. Those who are not following Christ die the death of their immortality. And they will spend the rest of eternity in hell. They had a chance through Christ. He's the only way. Jesus said, I'm the only way to the Father. Nobody kind of comes to the Father except through me. Verse 10, for the death that he died, he died to sin. Did you get that? It wasn't just a death. The two fellows next to him died too. And since then, billions of people have died. But he died to sin, to set us free. Thank you, Lord. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the lamb without spot or wrinkle. And he's called a church to be without spot or wrinkle. Yes. His followers, his body. How in the world can we be without spot or wrinkle when we're swimming around in a cesspool of sin? It's kind of like an oxymoron. We've got a wetsuit on, folks. And that wetsuit is Jesus Christ. If we put our trust and faith in him, we can move through this world of sin spotless, gleaming white in robes of white righteousness. He sees us through the blood of the Lamb as if we've never sinned. Yes. It's gone. Done away with, it says. We might have a memory of it, but he doesn't. Hallelujah. He doesn't look at us through our past sins. It's in his sea of forgetfulness. We have, when we come to him in confession and ask him to forgive, he will forgive. Pretty interesting, isn't it? And when he taught us to pray, he said, forgive us our trespasses, our sins. Something where I missed the mark today, the bullseye. I may have said, done, thought, whatever. It came my way. Tried to blemish me? No. Forgive me my sin. And those that who are trespassing against me, Lord, those who are sinning against me, we see that all the time in the news today. We get all upset and irate about some of these things, and we get irate about against a person or persons and so on. Be careful that you don't sin in doing that. Lodge something against you. We don't want to sin. We want to forgive. Jesus said, forgive him. Because if you don't forgive him, he says, I won't forgive you. Who's he talking to? He's talking to his disciples. And his disciples wrote it in a book so we could learn that and, and we could pray that way on a daily basis. That's right after give us the, our daily bread. Prayer. So let's forgive. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. That the life he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon or decide for yourselves to be dead indeed to sin and be alive in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. It's up to us. Praise God. He's already sent the message through his apostles. And they spread the word. They wrote the New Testament. John even wrote a prophecy in Revelation about the end times. Jesus told us what it's going to look like in the end, end, end times before his return. And it's looking pretty close to what Jesus said around the world. The intensity of the infractions and their interval, the time interval between them, it's the time is drawing short. So, the message, get in, stay in, get saved, stay saved, and bring somebody with you. Amen? Yes.
Because one day, just like the ark, Jesus said as in the days of Noah, so shall the Son of Man, his coming will be. In the days of Noah, he got in the ark, him and his family, and the door was shut. Who shut the door? Who shut the door? God shut the door. So now, is, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that we would tell people, I'm free. I'm free, and you can be too. Amen? Amen. If they're of the truth, they'll hear you. Yes. And follow you. 